Okay, so we can see uh, in the table, we, we kind of understand why a 100 increase in government spending will eventually result in a 400 increase in income and total expenditure. So that real GDP goes up by 400 instead of just the initial 100. But, uh, and, and, I, and I said that the reason that's happening is because consumption is increasing by 300. It's going from 7,700 up to 8,000. But what we haven't answered yet is why is that happening? Why is consumption increasing by 300? What's happening behind the scenes, behind the numbers, to cause consumption to increase by 300 in this particular example? Well, uh, I'm going to explain it over here. And the basic idea is there is a chain reaction of consumption spending. The initial injection in government spending sets off a domino effect where there's going to be a whole bunch of spending that then is going to be caused in the economy after the government initially spends its extra $100 here. Okay, And so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, well, let me, actually, let me try to explain a little bit of, of um, how this is going to work. So when investment increases or government spending increases, and it'll also happen for net exports, but I'm going to focus on investment in government spending. Let's say that, that the government decides that they're going to spend $100 billion. When they spend it, I want to remind you that total expenditure that this government spending is, they're not just giving money away to people. They are buying stuff. They're buying final use stuff. They're buying, uh, let's say, uh, cars. They're buying computers. They're buying buildings. They're buying chairs. They're buying uh, desks. So they're actually buying stuff. Who are they buying this stuff from? They're buying this stuff from companies. They're buying from Walmart. They're buying from Target, or they're buying from directly from uh, uh, office supply companies and uh, and General Motors or Toyota. Uh, they're buying products. They're buying economic output. And when they buy that stuff, the let, let's say that that they buy, I don't know, let's say that they buy um, a bunch of computers from Dell or something. So let's say that they buy, um, I don't know, uh, $500,000 worth of computers from Dell. So they're going to send $500,000 to Dell computers. The money that goes to Dell computers, okay, so $50,000, When Dell receives this money, okay, some of that money is going to go to the owners of Dell as profit. Some of that money is going to go to the employees of Dell. It's their, their income, right? Uh, now, profit for owners is also income. So when owners get some of this money as profit, because they're owners of the, of the Dell company, that is income. When some of this money is given to the employees of Dell, that is also income. And some of this money that Dell receives has to be used to buy the parts to make the computers, right? So they're going to then give some of this money. Some of this money is going to go to other companies or other firms, OK? So some of the money is going to go to the owners as profit. Some's going to go to the employees. And some's going to go to other. Some of that money is going to go to the other firms. When those other firms get that money, from Dell, some of that money is going to go to the owners of that firm as profit, which is going to be income for those owners, personal income. It'll go in their bank accounts, right? And some of that money that's given to the other firms is going to go to their employees because they have employees also. 
and that is going to be the income of the employees of that company. And then that company probably had to buy some stuff from other companies to make their own stuff. So for example, let's say that one of these companies makes uh, computer screens, right? And they sell those computer screens to Dell. So Dell pays this other company money for their computer screens. And they take the money that they get from Dell and they some of it is profit for their the owners of the company, some of it they pay to their employees as income. But in order to make the computer screens, they had to buy supplies from other companies. And so some of that money is going to go to other firms. Now, those other firms are going to take that money and it's going to go to the owners of the firm as profit which is income for the owners. Some of that money is going to go to their employees as income. And then some of that money is going to go to other firms for supplies. Okay? That's going to keep happening until there, isn't, there aren't any other firms to send money to. Eventually, all of the money, all of the $50,000 that the government spent on these computers from Dell, ultimately, after, after being sent to other businesses and other businesses, ultimately all of the money will eventually go to um, either owners or employees of all of the different businesses, and all $50,000 will become income. And so here's the deal, is that initial increase in government spending of $100 billion dollars Ultimately, it will all become income. And so what we can say is, this is according to Keynesian economic theory, is that, a, that an increase in government spending of 100 essentially is just income to people eventually. So now here's what we're going to say. So let's say that income is now $100 billion. So we have an increase in income of $100 billion. Well, according to the marginal propensity to consume, which is 0.75, an increase in income of $100 billion times 0.75 will result in $75 billion in, in increase in consumption. And so consumption will now go up from 7,700 up to 7,775. We will have an increase in uh, consumption of $75 billion. Okay, so now, it's gonna get a little crazy. When these, cons when these people took their income and spent the $75 billion, where did they spend that money? Well, they spent it at stores. They may have bought their own computer from Dell, right? They may have bought a car. They may have bought some food. They may have gone out to eat at a restaurant. And here's ultimately what happened. By the way, initially, really what I should have put up here was $100 billion. The $100 billion in government spending ultimately filtered down to a whole bunch of employees and owners, and it became income. Now... That's, that $75 billion in consumption is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to go to the owners and employees of the restaurants where these people ate. It's going to go to the owners and employees of the, of the stores where these consumers bought stuff like Walmart and Target. And eventually, this whole $75 billion is going to turn into $75 billion in income again. And so I'm going to put an arrow here. So this 70, well, let me put an arrow from here. This $75 billion is going to become $75 billion in income, which, were, which is now going to be multiplied by the marginal propensity to consume of 0.75. I'm going to need a calculator for this. If I take uh, $75 billion times 0.75, I get 56.25 billion. 
56.25 billion. So now what we're going to have is another 56.25 billion dollars in consumption spending. And that 56.25 billion dollars when when consumers spend it. Now remember these are the employees of the restaurants and the owners of the stores where people bought things, they, they, they're now taking this money. It's income for their business, but, it's also, but then it becomes income personally for them. Now they're going to take that $56.25 billion and that's their income, so $56.25 billion, and they're going to spend it, but not all of it. They're only going to spend 0.75 according to the marginal propensity to consume. And so, when those people spend their $56.25 billion times the marginal propensity to consume, which is 0.75, that's going to become 40, approximately, I'm going to round this number, $42.19 billion. And when, so these people are going to spend their $56.25 billion, well, they're going to spend 75% of it at stores and restaurants and buying cars and other and going on vacations and what they're going to spend is 42.19 billion. Well, what's going to happen to that 42.19 billion? That 42.19 billion dollars is now going to be income in the pockets of the owners of empl and employees of all the places where that 46 billion was spent or for, excuse me 42 billion was spent. And so now, all the owners and employees of those stores and restaurants and, and companies are going to take their income, which is $42.19 billion, and they're going to spend it according to the marginal propensity to consume. And now $42.19 billion times 0.75 is $31.64 billion. $31.64 billion dollars. And this, this is a chain reaction. This chain of initial injection becoming income that is spent, that becomes income and is spent and becomes income and is spent. Do you see what's happening to this, to the consumption number? 75 billion in consumption, then 56.25 billion in consumption, then 42.19 billion in con consumption, then 31.64 billion in consumption. This number is getting smaller, okay? And it's going to keep getting smaller until it eventually approaches zero. And eventually, after this entire chain reaction of spending, the last one is going to be zero times 0.75. It's going to basic, it's going to approach zero is what it's going to do, okay? And if we were to add up, I mean, if we just add up these four numbers with a calculator, we would get 75 billion plus 56.25 billion plus 42.19 billion plus 31.64 billion. We're already at 205 billion. And remember how I said that that we're basically going to get an additional 300 billion in consumption because we're going to move from here up to here, right? We're going to get an additional 300 billion in consumption. And we're already at 205.08. Well, this number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and ultimately it's going to approach 300. And so when we add up all of the that all of the chain reaction of spending after the initial injection from government spending of 100 billion, the resid this extra spending, this chain reaction of spending is going to become $300 or $300 billion. And then when we add the 300 billion plus the 100 billion of initial, an initial injection of government spending, we get 400 billion dollars, which is equal to the initial injection times the Keynesian multiplier, which is four. And four times 100 billion is 400 billion. And that's why we result in 
uh, in an increase in real GDP from 12,400 up to 12,800. Okay, we've got this chain reaction of consumption spending. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you sort of a, I'm just going to tell, tell you in words, and you can write them all down, how this, um, what's happening with this, uh, this chain reaction of consumption spending. So first, the very first thing that happens in this chain reaction is there is an initial, an initial change in investment or government spending or net exports. So we'll have an initial change in investment, government spending, or net exports. In this case, the initial change was an increase in $100 billion in government spending. Now, the initial change can also be a decrease. We could, uh, something could happen in the economy to where there's a decrease in investment by you know, $200 billion, okay? So there, first, there's an initial change. Okay, so that money, that money is new income for owners and employees of the, of the sellers. Meaning where, where the, the money, the initial change, where this money that was spent is now new income for the owners and, and the employees of those businesses, okay? So those uh, who receive the income, oops, those who receive that income, or let's just say those owners and employees, They're going to spend their new income according to the marginal propensity to consume. Okay, so they're not going to spend all of it. If they got a, if we had an increase in a hundred billion dollars, they're not spending all one hundred billion dollars. They're only going to spend seventy-five billion of it because the marginal propensity to consume is 0.75. The other point, the other twenty-five billion, they're either going to save it or they're going to um, pay off debt or or something else with it. Okay. So then this spending right here, okay, when these owners and employees spend, that's an increase in consumption now. So this consumption spending is new income for other owners and employees who then spend according to the marginal propensity to consume. So what we have is change in government spending becomes income. That income becomes consumption. That consumption becomes income and is spent again and becomes consumption again. And then income, consumption, income, consumption, income, consumption, income. All right? And so this, this is a chain reaction. This chain reaction will continue until the uh, marginal propensity to consume, because it's smaller than one, reduces new consumption down to zero dollars okay so that chain reaction is just going to constantly being uh they take their new income they spend it it becomes consumption but it's less than it, than their income was but that's now new income and that becomes consumption and that becomes income and that becomes consumption but the number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until new consumption eventually becomes zero and then the last thing we're going to say here is 
let's say the total change. In GDP, after all this chain reaction, will be equal to the initial change in investment or government spending or net exports, X minus M, times the Keynesian multiplier, times the Keynesian multiplier. And all I'm doing right now, all I'm doing here is just explaining to you what you already saw and what you already calculated. In this economy, because the marginal propensity to consume is 0.75, that makes the Keynesian multiplier 4. So if government spending inc increases by $100 billion, you're just going to multiply $100 billion times 4, the Keynesian multiplier, and that is going to be the total change in GDP. And so there will be a total change in GDP of $400 billion, which we can see on the table as we go from 12400 up to 12800 And over here in this column, we go from 12400 up to here, which becomes 12800 because we added 100 in government spending. Okay? And that is the chain reaction of consumption. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do kind of a, a, another example of the chain reaction of spending. All right, let's do an uh, example of this chain reaction. Let's say we've got an economy. We, it, the numbers don't really matter right now, the, the, the overall GDP numbers. Here's what we know is that the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8, and there's going to be a $50 billion increase in investment in this economy. Now, we can start off, before even starting the chain reaction, we can already know what the total effect is going to be in the economy because we can find the Keynesian multiplier using the marginal propensity to consume. And we know that the Keynesian multiplier is equal to 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. So that's going to be 1 over 1 minus 0.8. 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2, so 1 over 0 0.2, which is 5. And so the Keynesian multi multiplier in this economy is 5. We can take that Keynesian multiplier 5, multiply it by the $50 billion increase in investment, and 50 billion times 5 is equal to 250 billion dollars. And so we know that ultimately in the economy, what this is going to result in, this 50 billion in increase in, in investment, that it should result in a $250 billion increase in GDP. Now, that is according to Keynesian economic theory. Uh, so I'm, I want to clarify that what I'm saying right now, I'm not saying this is the absolute truth, this is how it works. I'm saying this is what Keynes is theorizing is going to happen when there is an increase in 50 billion and the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8, okay? But now let's see where this $250 billion came from. We know that 50 billion of it came from the initial increase in investment. And that means that the other 200 billion is going to come from uh, is going to come from consumption, chain, uh, increases in consumption due to income increases uh, in the, for the individuals in the economy. Okay? All right, so we know that we're going to have the 50 billion, the initial 50 billion. I'm not going to put the B, we're just going to put $50, but it's representing 50 billion. And I'm going to need a calculator. And so I know that because the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8, this $50, 50 billion dollars that's initially invested, uh, put in investment, it's spent and becomes income for owners and employees. Those owners and employees are gonna spend, how much of that 50 billion are they gonna spend? Well, we're gonna multiply the 50 billion times the marginal propensity to consume, which is 0.8, and that means they're gonna spend 40 billion of the 50 billion. And so that means consumption is going to go up by 40 billion. So now investment goes up by 50 billion and consumption goes up by 40 billion. Now, when that 40 billion dollars is spent as consumption, it's ultimately going to make its way to owners 
and employees of the businesses where the money was spent, and they are going to spend their $40 billion, but not all of it. They're going to take the $40 billion and they're only going to spend 80% of it. So if we go 40 times 0.8, we get $32 billion. So that's going to ultimately result in another $32 billion in consumption. That $32 billion is going to become income for owners and employees. And those owners and employees are going to spend some of it. They're going to spend 80% of it. So we're going to multiply 32 times 0.8 and we get 25.6 billion. So that's 25.6 billion in consumption. And then that's 80% of that is now going to be spent. And that's going to be 20.48 billion in consumption. And then 80% of that is going to be spent. So times 0 0.8. So put plus. That's going to be 16.384 billion. 16.384 billion. And then that 80% of that is now going to be spent because this is going to filter down again to the owners and employees of the businesses who are then going to spend 80% of it according to the marginal propensity to consume. And that's going to become 13.107 billion. And then that's going to become income. This is consumption. This is consumption, but it'll become income for the owners and employees of the businesses where it was, where it was spent for consumption. So now we're going to multiply by 0.8 again, and we get 10.486. 10.486 billion as consumption. Then 80% of that is going to be spent, and that's going to be 8.389. So 8.389 billion as consumption. And then that's going to turn into income and spent according to the marginal propensity to consume times 0 0.8. So that's going to be 6.711 billion in consumption, which will become income for owners and employees. And then they'll spend 80% of this and that'll be 5.369 billion in consumption, which will then become income for owners and employees of those businesses. And they'll spend 80% of that money. And that'll be 4.295 billion in consumption, which will then go to the owners and employees of those businesses, and then they'll spend 80% of that money that they just earned, which will be 3.436 billion in consumption. And then that'll filter down to employees and owners of those businesses, and they'll spend 80% of that money, and that'll be 2.749 billion in consumption, and then they, that'll filter down to the owners and the employees of those businesses, and, and then those, that'll be their income, and they'll spend 80% of that according to the marginal propensity to consume, and that'll be 2.199 billion. And as you can see, this is gonna continue getting smaller and smaller and smaller, 50, 40, 32, 25, 20, 16, 3, 13, 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. It's going to go down to two, more twos, then ones, then less than one. And now here's the thing. So what we're going to now do is eventually the last number plus the last number is going to be zero. And when we add all of this up, it should be 250 billion. So we're going to go 50 plus 40 plus 32 plus 2048 plus 16.384 plus 13.107 plus 10.486 plus 8.389 plus 6.711 plus 
5.369 plus 4.295 plus 3.436 plus 2.749 plus 2.199 plus. Now at this point we are at 215.605 billion. And we're making our way up to 250 billion. Because remember, the Keynesian multiplier is 5, and 5 times 50 billion is going to be 250 billion. And we're almost there. Now, our numbers are getting smaller and smaller, but we're still adding them up. And you can see here that we're at $215.605 billion. And we're eventually going to make our way to 250 billion billion dollars. Okay? So I just wanted to give you another example and show you how the initial injection eventually turns into an overall effect equal to the initial injection times the Keynesian multiplier. Okay? And that is the chain reaction of consumption uh, according to Keynesian economic theory.